I'm Robin Black, and I sincerely believe that the secrets to the universe lie within the sacred moments of combat. And in every single episode of this series, I'll do my damnedest to prove it. This is Fight Secrets. Champ actually has five arm bars on her record, but it ain't five arm bars in five minutes. It's three arm bars in three minutes. Think of the hand as the knob of the baseball bat tucked underneath the arm, and then she hyperextends that elbow. Starting in the mount, she's controlling the head, but she's segmented off the arm. Now the other arm punches, and this one out, this one in, leg over top, and she sits back, Weep. she's created the beginning of the submission. Now, it's all about holding on to it and setting her opponent up from here. This isn't a zero or one game. Game. This isn't binary. It's not either getting or not getting. It's working for it. Continually moving the arm underneath her left armpit. An opponent moves counterclockwise. Over and over she moves counterclockwise. And just as she continues to do it, watch. Again, she'll threaten to the one side. The opponent moves counterclockwise. When she does, rip the arm to the other side. Tuck that knob underneath her arm and then hyperextend that baby knees squeezing. How about arm bar number two? Look at this. Same scenario. Nice and tight. But it's the setup that is so beautiful here. She's going to slice a little bit across the face from the mount position. Watch for it right here. Now, as she slices across, the opponent will reach up to defend. As soon as she does, post on two hands, sternum to trap the arm in position and step the foot over top and then back and extend, knees tighten. Now, this isn't, like I said, a zero or one game. It's not binary. It's not, it's not on or off. You don't catch or don't catch. It's a process. The opponent will continue to fight and continue to fight. You stay with it one step ahead of their defense. Look, the feet are trying to kick off. And the more you can threaten, the easier this becomes. If she sweeps that leg across, there is an omoplata threat here, and it is this combination of threats that forces the opponent to defend, and when she does, the armbar will be there for her. That is a beautiful submission, perfectly put together. My favorite, though, is this one. Why is this one so wonderful? Let's take a look closely. Do you see it? Do you see the detail here on this armbar? Look again. Let's look up close. Look, it's not one armbar, it's two armbars. Holy shit! It's four arm bars in three minutes because those are two, it's a double arm bar. Now this is set up, people just call this a rubber guard, any kind of high guard. This is not a rubber guard, that's a lazy description. In fact, I asked Eddie Bravo, the creator of the rubber guard system, what's going on here? And he said, well, her left hand is not in the right position. In fact, she's improvising her way around here. She'll regrip, free that hand from where the hand was. It was not doing her any service. In fact, it was locked up, but now she's got her hands where she wants, grabs her own uh, shit pulls it down and reaches underneath the arm. That'll change her own direction to put a tight angle on the triangle. Now, one thing you notice with this triangle is both arms are in. It's called the Dead Orchard, named after Nathan Orchard. She will extend both of the arms. Elvis Sinisek did it for the first time in an MMA competition. Nathan Orchard uh, mastered it and progressed it and Eddie Bravo, and now shown here beautifully by Alima Leigh McFarlane. Three breakdowns of three arm bars with three different concepts in three minutes. Big. So what's the narrative, right? What do we say? Juliana Velasquez, to win this fight, she has to show phenomenal takedown defense, right? No! Random tangent! My friends, takedown defense is not a real thing. It's merely a commentary narrative. Now I know what you're thinking. Robin Black, I've heard world champions on commentary say takedown defense, but it is not a real thing. It's merely a narrative. At best, it's an objective. Defending the takedown is a singular objective. You never want to have only a single objective. When somebody's on your hips, you might try to stop them from taking you down. You might try to fatigue them. You might try to train them and make them think in a particular way. You might try to hurt them. You might try to reverse them. You might try to get on top of them. You might try to confuse them. You never singularly defend a takedown. You try to improve your position in any way possible. It's a narrative and it's a lazy narrative. Big. All right, with that in mind, let's look what Juliana Velasquez does when someone is attempting to take her down. Keep the head lower than the hips, control them in a position, but always look to damage. Look to dominate in whatever way is possible. Here she will back step, and then she will look to strike, controlling the head, but not necessarily separating if you can hurt the person here. Wrestling is not an either or. It's not a stop the takedown or get the takedown. It is a fluid type of combat, and we see it here again. Opponent comes in, looks for the leg. Yes, 
Yes, she will keep the head lower than the hips. Yes, she will control the body. Yes, she will stay in a position of dominance, but she will also strike it. When she does, now she finds a position. Can she submit from here? Not if she has a singular objective of stop the takedown, but if instead she's willing to do whatever comes and flow, flow with the game, she gets what? An arm bar. Of course, this is a game of arm bars today. The left hand will strike, and then it will be the same hand that digs in and scoops to the arm. Now from here, we are in a position of dominance, controlling the arm. The right leg is over. We're going to pull and extend and bite down with that right leg. Let's put the left leg over top and hyperextend the arm. We're going to look at it one more time up close. Again, if all we did was defend the takedown, we wouldn't be here. Pulling on the arm and biting down with the heel to control the body. Now watch the right heel here inside the arm to keep the arm from fighting. Left leg comes over top and we finish. We didn't defend the takedown. We used the takedown to find the position to win this fight. One more arm bar, baby. My friends, this whole clarifying of objectives and using precise language, I'm not trying to be difficult. I'm not even trying to be different. You just realize over time that the language that you use shapes particular concepts and then those concepts dominate our thinking. This is happening everywhere in the world, not just fighting. So the more precise you can get, the more honest you can get, the more you can grow your understanding of all things. All right, let's move on. Now, speaking of objectives, one thing a fighter can do at any moment is end the fight with a single strike. Observe. Now, this elbow bink, slices the skin. The elbow is pointy and the skull is covered by a very thin, thin layer of skin and there's a lot of blood in between. Now, Veda's incredibly tough. She wanted to continue. The doctor would come in and take a look. Now, we're gonna take a look. And yes, fighting is a very, very dangerous game. Ooh, yee. <laughs> yeah, we should stop that fight again. Veda's so tough, she wanted to continue. Now, but the fight has to end. How is this created? Controlling the wrists, she'll step up with her left foot. And as she does now, she steps in again, pressing down weight, gravity, all of it in resistance. That creates the leverage to big slice the elbow slicing the skin again controlling two wrists the right leg will step in now the lean over top along with gravity her full body weight the pressure opponent pressures back up and big slices over top cuts open that skin many ways to finish a fight and this is one that's particularly violent and particularly provocative some people love watching blood some people are disturbed by it but it is a simple beautiful truthful part of combat and in this fight it ended the fight Ali Malay was like nobody wants to win this way I disagree I asked 100 fighters and 98 of them said I'll win any old way but Ali Malay is a classy classy martial artist Veda is an incredibly tough martial artist it it was a wonderful fight. Ooh, I hope we get to see these two fight at least in part on the ground. But of course, fights are complex and dynamic living organisms. They have so many phases, so many different battlefields, so many skills and tactics and strategies, so many different elements. And of course, they all start standing. One element to watch for is the elegant southpaw tactics of Juliana. Look, left hand gets through, jab sneaks through on the inside line. Look at this sequence. Kick. Uh, takes her right off the feet. Now, opponent was kicking on the jab, so a deep penetration step with the jab. Now, turning the hips, opponent's hips are squared. That's when you can really bink knock them off their feet, which impresses the judges and gives you all types of positional advantages. Look at this sequence right here. Bink, bink, bink. Bink, bink, bink. Just a ton of combinations put together, and it was all by design. A little fake here with the hip, just to get her thinking about the kick. Now, the step and the paw to pull down and really set up a straight left. Bink. Stays in it long enough to put the one, two together. Now, this is all happening without conscious thought. Touch, 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 and then separate. No conscious thought, just allowing herself to flow. And look at this one. Wait for it, bink. Oh, now that is an involuntary response. The floating rib can compress and put pressure on the liver. The liver creates that involuntary body shutdown. This isn't pain. This is the inability to stand or open your body. A full diaphragm exits with all the air. Look, she's gonna lean back and then left knuckle in while moving backwards. Same thing to set up the kick. She's gonna skip step back, plant that left foot and then drive the ball in and look at this little extension. 
right there shuts down the body all that pressure oh uh, you hear that sound as the diaphragm empties this fighter is a badass southpaw versus orthodox that is going to be a dynamic to watch for she's also classy the two of them are we're gonna have a wonderful fight between two brilliant martial artists and we're gonna see a lot of class i am so stoked for this fight and i hope you're as excited as i am alima lay mcfarlane undefeated bellator flyweight champion defends that world title against undefeated juliana velasquez this is december 10th thursday night on cbs sports join us and enjoy the hostilities wait i can't forget to say thank you for watching this series i love making it i love working with the bellator team uh, click subscribe like share leave a comment all that jazz it really helps and really means a lot to us thank you so much for watching and enjoy the hostilities my friend